live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Well, good morning and welcome to day three of our coverage here at Red Hat Summit 2019. We're live here on theCUBE. We're in Boston, Massachusetts and with Stu Miniman. I'm John Walls. Glad to have you with us for our last day of coverage. We're now joined by the SVP at Dow Technologies, uh, Pete Manka. Pete, good to see you this morning. Good to see you. And, and Pete, by the way, has, is coming with, I'm sure, a song in his heart and a smile on his face. Two and a half hours to get in today? It was a long drive in, but I'm here now. I'm excited to be here. This is a great show. And here with great partners. Yeah, right? the tough part's over, the right? Tough part's over. We're in Boston, not in Vegas, so that you've got to yeah. be a little bit. So there's some point. consolation. <laughs> right? Right. All right. Let's just first off, let's paint the umbrella here a little bit about the overall partnership between Dell EMC right. and Red Hat and uh, how that's evolved and, and currently where it stands with all the new releases that we've heard about this week. Yeah, it's been a great partnership for almost two decades now, right? Dell and, and, and Red Hat have been working together on a lot of different products um, from. Ready stack uh, uh, or ready architectures and ready nodes to uh, software sales support, uh, customer engagements. It's been a tremendous partnership for 20 years and I expect it to be going for another 20 years. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Pete, let's dig in a little bit. Walk us through the stacks, if you will, a, sure. a bit. We understand, you know, Red Hat is an operating system, you know, long history working on, you know, all, all the Dell platforms. You, you, you've got the, you know, the converged environment. Where, where does Red Hat fit and what pieces of, of their ever-broadening portfolio fit in? Right, so really on the Ready Solutions side of the world, which is another part of the, uh, uh, the products that I manage for Dell. So within the Ready Solutions environment, we work with Red Hat on OpenStack and we deliver hardened, supported OpenStack products to both telco and enterprise markets. Right. Uh, and then we also deliver OpenShift in a ready node and a ready solution environment so we can deliver that container, managed container environment uh, for those same enterprise and service provider customers. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's, you know, the Cube is at uh, you know, Dell Technologies World last week, right. and at that show in here, I saw a sizable breakout for telecommunications. You know, we can talk lots about enterprise, sure. but you know, telco's got some certain special requirements. You need to make sure it's certified for certain things, and you know, got to be tested out. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe talk a little bit about what those customers are looking for and why that match of Red Hat makes sense. Sure, I mean, telco really wants to um, have control over their environment, and they want to have, um, Open source is a great um, technology for, for telco, right? And they love taking the technology, um, customizing it for their own environment, uh, reselling components to their end users, and OpenStack from Red Hat is a perfect fit for that market. And so, again, we deliver that in a hardened solution on top of Dell Technologies on Dell PowerEdge servers, deliver that to the telco market and, and provide them the, the tools and the capabilities they need to deliver the solutions to their customers. Yeah, what, it, what is it? Let's dive in just a little bit then about those specific traits or attributes you think in terms of the telco market goes. You know, what is it specifically about you think their needs that they find so attractive about open source and what makes them stand apart from other industry sectors? Yeah, to me it's control and customization. Um, so rather than taking a, a packaged app that's shrink wrapped and, and running it like everybody else, they want to be able to customize and control for their markets. They have certain, as Stu mentioned, they have certain standards and uh, compliance that they have to deal with. Um, they also want to differentiate within that telco market, um, so it's hard to do without having control uh, around the underlying stack. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think those are the big attractiveness around it. And then, um, you know, the, the, the solution from Red Hat combined with Dell is, is such a um, enterprise quality product for the telco market, which I think has certain advantages as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Pete, you, you mentioned uh, you know the, the ready solutions in OpenStack piece, and then on top of that, there can be OpenShift. So That's a right. lot of news, you know, to talk to you know many of the customers uh, and the executive team on the team here. OpenShift four showing good momentum over right. a thousand customers. So wh where, how does that fit in with uh, the solutions you're offering? Well, so we offer a ready solution for OpenShift as well, right? And we see that as the uh, uh, container solution for the. Uh, the market that um, really wants those open source type products um, and has aligned themselves with Red Hat and, and Linux and so it's a perfect solution for that and you know we really see OpenShift as the ability to um, create a managed environment for containers. As we saw from Paul's keynote, um, with OpenShift 4 now, it provides a tremendous hybrid cloud experience for customers that want to migrate workloads both on-premises to cloud and back and so uh, we think that's tremendous technology that will add value and with our hardware technology underneath that, uh, we can prov provide a stack that 
uh, we think services the market quite well. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's funny, Pete. You know, you've got a lot of history, and I've worked with you for many years right. on this. Uh, the ultimate, a lot of these technologies. You go back to server virtualization. You look at containerization mm -hmm. and Kubernetes. They're like, oh well, we want to abstract up to allow the applications to be able to be modernized and do these wonderful things. And I shouldn't have to think about the infrastructure. Right. But we know at the end of the day, it lives on something and it needs to be good. Talk a little bit about things like Kubernetes and you know, where Dell thinks they fit from an infrastructure standpoint compared to Kubernetes. Yeah, and what we want to do is provide the infrastructure that makes it easy to, for workloads and applications to preside on, including um, OpenShift and Kubernetes environments, right? And so, really what you want to do, and for years, as you say, we've got a lot of history in this, we've been trying to push that um, complexity and management up the stack so the hardware and even the virtualization layer and the container layer um, become an afterthought, right? And you know, what I saw from OpenShift 4 is that really puts the power back into the application developers and makes it easier to, to manage and um, control your underlying hardware environment. So with tight integrations into the OpenShift community um, with our Dell technology stack, we can provide that sort of seamless uh, infrastructure layer that allows the application developers to go do what they need to do yeah. and not be worried about infrastructure management. Do, do you have any customer examples that might help highlight the partnership? Um, no, I don't have any customer. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't, sorry, I didn't uh, come okay. with a customer. Uh, well, let's talk about Ford a little bit. I mean, you talk about hybrid and uh, right. what that's going to enable there. Is that the, uh, oh, here we go, for you on this uh, in terms of What's new, uh, what's the latest? I mean, what about the capabilities you're going to get now out of four, or what's going to be offered, and, and what is it that's kind of jumping off the page to you that says, yeah, this was worth the, uh, the wait? Well, to me, it was all about the management and the automation of the underlying infrastructure. Just, again, taking that complexity away from um, the developers and, and putting it, um, allowing the application developers the tools they need to do to, to very quickly develop applications, but also migrate them to the proper landing spot. And it, it may be cloud one day, it may be on premises the next. You know, one of the beauties of cloud is, is there are classes of applications that may ne not necessarily fit on a, on a public cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not know that until you get there, and you want to mm -hmm. have the flexibility to push them out and see how they, they work and, and bring them back in, and OpenShift gives you all those capabilities, OpenShift 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so absolutely what we hear from customers, it, it, it's not the future is hybrid and multi-cloud, it's today, and the future are That's both right. hybrid and multi-cloud today. Um, to that point, I wonder if you can help us, uh, just, uh, it, it's not Dell uh, specific, but VMware made an announcement today uh, that they're supporting OpenShift 4 on top of VMware. Can you maybe right. uh, t t explain where that fits into the overall discussion? Yeah, I mean, so look, um, Dell is all about providing choices to customers, and we want to we want to be, and we are the essential infrastructure company um, to the enterprise and, and uh, commercial environments, and so, OpenShift on VMware is just another example of choice. And customers are going to have different application environments out there. They're going to run some in containers, they're going to run some in VMs, they're going to run some native. Um, we want to be the infrastructure provider for that and we want to work with partners like Red Hat to provide choice to our customers. You know, in, you know we've heard a lot this week about flexibility, right? And scale and options and all. And I understand providing choice is a great thing you know, to customers. But what does that do for you in terms of having to answer to all of that desire for <laughs> flexibility? Well, it's, it's opportunity and it's challenge, right? Uh, yeah. Supporting all these different environments, of course, is a challenge for our engineering teams, but it's also opportunity. If we want to be, and we are the essential, you know, hardware technology player in the industry, we have to support all these leading platforms, and OpenShift is just an example of that. Yeah, but challenge on that side of it, um, I, and I get opportunity, right. uh, but, but you have to develop that expertise we do. You know, throughout your force, and, and that probably has its own challenges. It does, I and mean, we have to have expertise not only in, in uh, our own technologies like VMware, but right. also OpenShift and other uh, technologies or Red Hat technologies. We have to hire and cultivate um, open source engineers, you know, which is not always easy to find. Um, and we have to develop those expertise that know how to integrate those components together, right? It's not just a matter of taking the, the software and laying on top of an x86 architecture and saying it's done. We want to be able to integrate that so we provide the best experience to the customer. So having that capability to understand what's happening at the hardware infrastructure layer, but also what's happening at the virtualization and container layer um, is, is a critical piece of um, knowledge that we have to, we have to grow and um, continue to work with. Yeah, but, but, but what about, I mean, as far as the, the competitive 
nature of the workforce then. I kind of, I'm thinking about it, it's almost like ways. The more people who use it, the tougher it is to get yeah. around, right? Because, so the more people who are moving toward open source, the more, which is great, but it also the more competitive the hiring becomes, the training becomes, it, it does bring with it um, certainly, I wouldn't say barriers by any means, but a different factor. It, it's a challenge across the entire industry right now, hiring um, good technical people, and it's not just an open source space, it's in all spaces. Um, hmm. Open source is a particular challenge because it takes a certain set of skills to, uh, to work in that environment. Um, Dell has a philosophy where we are continually looking at university hires and growing from within. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to hire as many new hires, new grads as we can. Um, but the reality is we have to look everywhere in order to try to mm -hmm. find those resources. They're very hard to come by um, and it's very competitive to, mm -hmm. uh, to get these employees or, or these uh, candidates, once you find them, it's hard to get them in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. a competitive environment out there. So it, it, it's interesting. If you just it's a step back for a second here, last week at, at your show, right. um, it was eye-opening to see Satya Nadella, you know, uh, up on stage with Pat Elsinger. You know, right. while Microsoft environments have lived on VMs for a long time, you know, as far as I know, this is the first time the two CEOs have been publicly seen together. Fast forward to here, and once again, we saw Satya Nadella up on stage with, right. you know, Red Hat. It's, you know, for, for years we think about the industry as to the competitive nature and what's going on and who's fighting who. Uh, Multi-cloud, it's not like it's everybody's holding hands and singing, you know, Kubernetes Kumbaya, <laughs> but uh, it, it is a slightly different dynamic today than it might have been it's, in the past. It's very different uh, in the past when there were more infrastructure players, more software players. You could pick your swim lanes and you can compete. Mm -hmm. um, now the lines are blurred and cloud definitely has a lot to do with that, right? And hybrid multi-cloud has everything to do with that because if your application is going to run on AWS one day, on-premises the next day, in Azure the next day, you better have tools, processors, and procedures that allow those applications to migrate across that multi-cloud experience. And so what it forces vendors to do is get together and participate in a coopetition, whatever your favorite word is for um, competitors working together, but that's really what it is, is we've realized, you know, look, hey, Dell Technologies, uh, you know, VMware is part of our family, but we're working with Red Hat. Uh, we're working with Microsoft, and Red Hat, as you see, is doing the same thing. It's necessary in today's market, in today's environment, that you, you just have to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, uh, you mentioned swim lanes. I hope the express lane is open for you on the ride home tonight. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> Good. Good luck with that. Thanks for the time this morning too. Good to see you. It's a home game for you, so uh, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. No, this is a great place to be and it's a, a great event and I'm glad I could be part of it. Very good, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Back with more live coverage here. You're watching theCUBE, our coverage of Red Hat Summit 2019.